What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ecoli Espresso and welcome back to part 3 of the zombie storyline here today on the channel. Today we're going to be continuing from what we discussed in part 2, that link can be found in the description below if you guys did in fact miss that. And again, just to recap, this is from the Call of Duty wiki because I personally don't think that I could summarize this any better without leaving any pieces out. So, it's going to be a little narrative here again as with the other two. And without further ado, we can just jump right into it. So, picking right up from where we left off in part 2. As they continued fighting, Dempsey and Takiao slowly begin to regain their memory. Takiao is the first to remember and remarks to himself that someday, when the group is finished fighting zombies, Richtofen will get what he deserves. Dempsey, on the other hand, is slowly making progress as he remembers that he'd seen Richtofen before being captured. Takiao notes his shifting memories and believes Dempsey is finally remembering what Richtofen did to him. In modern day 2011, George A. Romeo stumbled upon Group 935's research while making a World War II film. He and the cast took a ship out to the now abandoned lab in Siberia. After he and the movie's crew were zombified by the remains of the ship's crew, only four main actors of the crew, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert Englund, Danny Trejo, and Michael Rooker remained alive. After the cashmere mechanism was completed in Ascension, it overloaded the teleporter and sent the original characters to a Group 935 facility in Siberia where they were trapped behind a locked door. Richtofen then asked the celebrities to help him obtain the Golden Rod, which they did. Richtofen thanks their group by giving them the Wonderwolf DG2 to help them fight the zombies. It is unknown what became of the celebrities after helping the group escape to Stranger Law, though sometime later Romero was interviewed where he recounted the story of how he found the research and how he came to make the film. Shangri-La, a temple that was once a mining facility for Element 115, however, does not live up to its name, as its inhabitants have been all zombified before the group's arrival. Richtofen now states that this was the last step to controlling the world before he was teleported there. Prior to the group's arrival at Shangri-La, two explorers, Brock and Gary, went on an expedition to prove their theories on Agartha. Brock later figures out that the temple wasn't built by an ancient civilization, but by people in the modern era interpreting it. After investigating the temple, the pair accidentally activated the temple's time travel and died in a resulting zombie attack. The group travels back in time and helps the pair survive. When the group finally creates the focusing stone and places on an altar with Richtofen's name on it, the two explorers are then sent back in the moment they discover the temple, indicating they're stuck in a never-ending loop. Now in possession of both the Golden Rod and the Focusing Stone, Richtofen believes he can now control the zombies. The group then travels to Area 51 so they can get to the moon via a teleporter to Griffin Station. When the group reaches Area 51, it is already overrun. Due to the Element 115 on the moon, astronauts and scientists sent there have been zombified before the group's arrival. Meanwhile, a group of radiation scientists investigate the ruins of a former nuclear test site in Nevada, when the undead begin to attack. Only one person, Marlton Johnston, survives. Richtofen then has the group complete the MPD. When the device is completed, it opens up to reveal Samantha Maxis, suspended in the air. As it turns out, the device acts like a prison and keeps her cryogenically frozen so she can be used to control the zombies. Richtofen goes to a terminal to power up the golden rod and the focusing stone, which he fuses together. However, he encounters Dr. Maxis inside the terminal, who tries to stop him. Richtofen then switches souls with Samantha to gain control of the zombies. Richtofen finally thinks everything has gone his way until Takiao, Dempsey, and Nikolai decide to stop him. Dr. Maxis, sensing Richtofen's betrayal, prepared a backup plan in case Richtofen got this far. The group then launches three missiles located on the moon, one of which impacts the nuclear testing site, destroying the Earth's ozone layer in the hopes that it will sever the link between the Aether, thereby greatly lessening the damage Richtofen could cause. Unfortunately, the calculations were made in haste, resulting in catastrophic destruction. The missile launch leaves the Earth in a post-apocalyptic, crumbling wasteland littered with undead hordes as civilization begins to collapse. As survivors begin to band together to form small human communities, and shelters to protect themselves from the now global undead threat, Maxis realizes the failure of his original plans due to hasty calculations and begins contacting survivors to help them with his plan B, to activate global polarization devices and open a gateway to the Aether, where he would overpower Richtofen and use its energy to heal the Earth. 
To complete his plans, Maxis began using electronic devices on Earth to communicate with survivors. Unbeknownst to his followers, Maxis planned to commandeer the Aether's energy for his own use to open the gateway to Agartha, which would ultimately destroy the Earth and its people. Richtofen, unsatisfied with his limited power to the undead, plans to activate those polarization devices as well, which would grant him further manipulation of both zombies and humans, and mend the rift a direct gateway to Agartha that would eternally damn the soul of Samantha Maxis. Limited to communicate with only those capable of hearing the voices of the Aether, Richtofen began his own plight and quest for unlimited power. And that is where we're gonna wrap up part three of the zombie storyline here today. Hopefully you guys did enjoy that part two. Again, can be found in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it, and if you did, be sure to leave a like rating down below, and if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for the best of Call of Duty Zombies content. Part four will be up here on the channel very shortly. We're getting close to actually wrapping this all up so hopefully you guys are enjoying this and thank you guys once again so much for watching my name is Nicola Espresso as always hope you guys are having a great day I'll see you guys tomorrow take care and peace